Hello and welcome, my name is Turner Shiko, and today's Sam Harvey video is all about the well-making optical snoot. As I mentioned in my unboxing video, I got this to help provide some shape to the light behind guests in a recent series of interviews. Specifically, I wanted it to look like a window-shaped light was on the wall behind them. But start from the beginning, if you don't know what a snoot actually is, it's kind of a funny word. Um, it's a tube that restricts the light's path as it travels from the lamp. Barn doors allow you to restrict the light and shape it, but a snoot is more useful in restricting it much further down and creating a circular nature to it, kind of like a spotlight. These are hard light modifiers. Snoots come in two types, a regular semi-conical tube shape and ones like this one which have a lens inside of it. That lens helps you focus your light to create hard or soft edges on gobos. That is another benefit of snoots, specifically optical ones, in that they allow you to use gobos, which are basically thin pieces of metal with patterns cut into them that are used to project those patterns onto surfaces. If you've ever worked in theater or been to a play, you might be familiar with gobos for theater lamps creating shapes. Because of the optics allowing for focus control, gobos are used with optical snoots and not regular ones. This one is from Wellmaking, a brand that I actually haven't used before, and for its price, I'm actually quite happy. There are a few quirks I will go over in a moment, but I wanna start off by saying that to get the control that I wanted for the price of about $170, I was really happy. Um, this was so helpful because I didn't need a cookie or other grip-intensive lighting equipment to get the shaping on the wall that I was looking for during my shoot. This snoot attaches via simply Bowen's mount, and then you insert your gobo and you're good to go. It couldn't be easier or have a smaller footprint than this. Using the gobos is really easy, and in general, focusing is really easy. And I'm sure that if I use it on a brighter lamp, the output would be even brighter and probably a little bit better. But I wasn't disappointed even when I just combined it with the simple GVM PDS lamp. All in all, it did what I needed, and I think it's a great tool for projecting shapes onto backgrounds or subjects. I am really happy that I didn't opt for the regular snoot because I wouldn't have just found it as useful. I will say that if I was looking for a tool to make hard focused light but without gobos, I probably would prefer the look and output of a Fresnel. So now a couple of things that range from things I think you should know about to make sure it fits your specific needs to quirks and issues that I don't love. To start off, this thing uses a Bowens mount as I have mentioned, so make sure that your lamp that you're going to be using has a Bowens mount, otherwise it won't be compatible. When you close down the aperture, the blades form a quite geometric shape that's really clear if it's in focus. You can lessen this by simply throwing it out of focus, which is a really easy solution. But depending on your application, a more expensive snoot might be more useful because there might be more blades that make it less geometric when closed down. I'm not overly concerned about this myself, but I think it's something that you should know. The gel and gobo holder leaves something to be desired because it takes a little getting used to actually inserting it in the unit, but that isn't really the issue. The issue is that you don't have ability to rotate it once it's inside the unit, so if your gobo is a little off angle, you have to remove the whole tray, adjust it, and then try it again. I really wish there was a way to rotate it because that would make this unit nearly perfect. My tip would be to look at the angle that it gets inserted, adjust the gobo to the angle that you would like it to be, and then insert it, and then make smaller adjustments. Um, that's the best thing that I've found to get it to be where you want a little quicker. On the point of the tray, the gels are actually not thick enough to stay in by themselves. So if you want to have a you know colored light, but it's just a spotlight and no gobo, put the gel in front of the lens like you would on pretty much any other lamp. It's such barely an inconvenience that it's barely worth noting. Now, if you do want to put a gel and a gobo together in this lamp, it actually works very well and they hold really tight, just like this. The only real issue that I have with this unit is how you manage focus. It's a little clunky with this pin that you slide across this groove because when you need to lock your focus in place, you have to twist the pin. And when you do so, it kind of moves it along the groove still. So you have to be really patient and careful as you rotate it as to not mess up your focus. If you do go slowly though, it's not a big issue, just something that I think could be managed with maybe a better design mechanism. And if you do get it locked down and it is off, just loosen it ever so slightly, make your adjustment, and then tighten it back down with roughly a quarter turn. That's how I've been managing it. Here are some examples from this unit with various gobos, gels, and even showing you how you can use it to focus light through glass bottles to create interesting shapes. Now I will have even more examples coming out soon in a standalone examples video.
Altogether, I do really like the well-making optical snoot, especially for the price when you compare it to other optical snoots that are almost twice as expensive, and for the features that it does actually have. I really do like that they include the six gobos. I think that the ones that are available are really a great starting place, but if you need more, there are kits available on Amazon. And bonus points for the box that it was shipped in actually having really great padding. I'm just keeping that box to use for transporting it to set myself. If you need specifically shaped light for talent and services, I think that this is a really good option to consider. And if you want to pick one up for your lighting kit, I have an affiliate link in the video's description down below that supports this channel at no cost to you. If you have any questions about using the well-making optical snoot, please leave them in the comments down below. In general, I'm curious to hear your thoughts about using snoots and gobos. The documentary shoot that I was referencing was really my first time actually using one of these, and I think that I'm hooked. It just was so easy to create really distinct shapes on the wall. If you like lighting equipment videos like this one, please give the video a like to help me with the YouTube algorithm and reaching new audiences. You can also subscribe for upcoming videos about tools and techniques for cinematography, lighting, and micro-budget filmmaking. These videos are viewer supported. So first off, thank you for watching. Please watch more. I would really love to have you stick around. But you can also find support links, affiliate links, and social media links all in the video's description down below. As always, stay safe and do something kind for someone today. Take care.